ban phones from the dance floor. I agree. I've spoken about it ad nauseum on this fucking podcast, haven't I? But we're going to speak about it even more now. Um, this is an article from the DJ Mag uh, website that I follow quite closely. I recommend you check it out for your electronic music news. Um, the title of the article is, Is it time for a total ban on phones on the dance floor? Which I thoroughly agree with. That image when you're at a gig and you're seeing those kind of lights beaming back at you is super annoying. Um, so, um, it's commonly understood, this article continues, I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out too, so you guys listen to it, just read it yourself. It's commonly understood that phone use at live events is a big problem. High profile DJs have been talking about the issue since at least 2015 at both Animac and Warehouse Project Founder. Uh, but, and both Andy Mac and Warehouse Project founder Sasha Lord publicly railed against overfilming earlier this year, saying in essence that it kills a vibe. A host of think pieces and opinion columns um, have also been published on the subject, with some suggesting the mass implementation of Bergan's infamous no photo policy as a way to protect the, the night. But for the first time, we now have a hard data showing exactly what the British go- gig going public thinks about using phones to film and photograph, photograph live events. The data comes from a survey conducted by a global thinking company, 60 company event bright over a 12 month period 1000 and 1000 and 1031 british adults were surveyed and all that attended a live ticket event within the year and while the data shows just how unpopular camera phones usage is in events also will do some surprising contradictory results first let's look at how popular um, unpopular filming is the wide majority of those surveyed 70 percent said that they find it irritating when others take pictures or videos during a show totally agreed it's incredibly irritating and annoying because usually the people that are taking videos and, and or pictures are usually in the best places to take videos and pictures, which is usually the best place to dance, right? The place where you want to go and let yourself go, put your hair down, dance, flow your arms around. That's why somebody's always got a phone out, take a picture of their friend or doing whatever nonsense they're doing. So it's always kind of, and it kind of forces everyone else to kind of move differently around the space. It's something as well you don't really take, you don't really, you take for granted when you go to Berlin. The freedom of movement everyone moves wherever they want you can walk right across in the front you can walk right in front of the dj booth without any trouble because no one's just standing there recording the dj in front of the railings you can walk all the way around where people are dancing and stuff there's no real there's no real bump you're not really afraid of bumping into somebody because the only thing they have in their hand is a drink and they're usually a little bit you know they usually know how to hold it in the right way so it doesn't you know slip out of their hands but when somebody's got a drink and a phone in their hand you feel super conscious about making sure you don't bump into them so you don't drop their expensive smart phone and you sort of bump into so you don't drop their their drink it's a lot of it's a lot of hassle it really affects how you move around the space so i definitely agree with that um the second thing and even the majority 81 percent said that they understood they understood why an artist might not like videoing and photograph photographing an event and as many artists have stated they usually don't do i find myself having to forest or to playing to a forest of phones waving in the air or store german dj anya schneider of course and for me that's a problem because you can't see the people you can't see the vibe you can't see people's faces which is true i can only imagine what it must look like from the dj booth because you know the places i play at for the mostly are in bars and pubs i'm not really playing in super dark lit um, nightclubs but i can only imagine that already at a nightclub you don't really get to see anybody on the dance floor because it's super dark but imagine all you're seeing is just these fucking you know the edges of these screens beaming back at you as they're dancing but they're not really dancing just standing you don't you can't really get away and again you only get a vibe of the place when you're in a club for the most part for me when i'm standing at the back i get to see what the vibe is usually when i come into a nightclub i'll usually might grab a drink go to the toilet or go to the toilet grab a drink come back on the dance floor and kind of survey the room i'll probably go from the back of the room all the way to the, from one side of the room at the back to the other side and might go and if there's any space towards the edges i'll kind of quickly stand in the front and see what the vibe is and then kind of you know pitch out around the back and find a little spot that i can dance and have a good time in and usually that's where you get the vibe but i guess if you're a dj and you're all the way at the front you can't tell that i'm having the time of my life at the back here you just see those dull ads at the front chin stroking and you know trying to clock what tune you're playing or recording a thing so they can put an opportunity ID later it's just a bit annoying you'd actually want it reversed you'd want me my group of people who are having the best fun to, or having the time of their lives to be at the front and for those chin strokers to be at the back but that's not how it works out unfortunately um, a majority of people also said that they feel like they're they'd be missing out on the event itself while taking pictures and video which is also true taking photos and videos is large, it's hugely distracting and doing it well is hard work just ask any f- f- club photographer. Of course, how many times have you been on Facebook and seen a club promoter asking for a club photographer, a good one, to come take pictures? It's very hard to take pictures in a place that is really not uh, made for you to take pictures in. Sometimes in, in places, some of the best events you go to want, want you to take pictures because people are having a good time. They don't want a record of it to live on the internet. Um, 
And there's also the idea that, you know, with your smartphone and your shitty smartphone and it's kind of rudimentary built in flash, you're never going to get, you're never going to capture the moment of why you were in there in this full glory anyway. So why bother? Um, especially if you go, and you know what I don't understand the most, the one that really gets on my butt, like beating my bonnet, is the fucking people that record at a boiler room. That is when it's, that's when I really want to pull my hair out. You're in a boiler room, right? Boiler room nowadays, if you've been to a boiler room in the past, I have been when it first kind of started. They were essentially just having, you know, the camera set up in front of the DJ as they were DJing. And maybe they might have had another camera that was pointing out to the crowd. But for the most part, it was mostly focused on the DJ. People stood around and that was it, right? Nowadays, that boiler room, if you go, it's a full, it's a full production, mate, right? They have cameras. They have three or four cameras um, um, pointing at the DJ. They have a person or a, a guy or a girl with an entire rig. You know those rigs that you can use as you're walking around, filming people inside the actual arena. It's like, so on the fucking dance floor, moving around from side to side. They have another person sometimes with a, a little handy um, GoPro, handy camera in their hand, they're recording some raw footage too. There's always cameras around. People are still recording at a boiler room. It doesn't make any sense. The only time you don't see it happening is at the Berlin boiler room. And guess what? Guess what? Which ones are the best boiler rooms um, when you watch them online uh, for the most part? The Berlin boiler rooms. They're the ones where people are actually having the most fun. They're dancing. They wear the most outlandish outfits. And there's not a phone in sight because in, they're, they're trained, right? That's the, that's your day-to-day -day life. Like, you don't get the chance to, like, have your phone and record shit. You can use your phone if you want to. But for the most part, even that's kind of frowned upon. Enjoy yourself. Um, put your phone away for fucking six hours and just enjoy the music. Anyway, Dr. Linda um, Hinkle of Farfield University of Connecticut explains you're actually less likely to remember whatever it is your mind's taking photos of because of what she calls photo taking impatient photo taking impainment effect. Your brain simply checks out the checks out of remembering the moment because it's already addicted to the responsibility of your smartphone. Very, very true. Um, again, I don't know anyone that rewatches their stuff. Who rewatches their videos that they record at gigs really? Do you rewatch them? Do you upload them? Do you upload them to YouTube? What do you do with those videos? Like, I don't understand the need for it. It's different when you're vlogging and you're, you know, a vlogger and you want to document your lifestyle or what you're doing or your days or documenting stuff. Cool. But recording an event, I've never rewatched a video that I've recorded an event and see. Oh man, I remember that. I don't. I don't remember what happened. And I guess that kind of goes back to what she's saying here. Um, it continues. Uh, more so, humans aren't meant to experience life behind the screen, especially at a communal event like a festival. Life where sharing a physical experience that can easily be replicated in a digital realm is being is a big part of what makes it so special. Of course, right? That's why I love nightlife. That's why I love club culture. That's why I'll fight until you know until the cows come home until the very end. Uh, against these draconian um, London licensing laws and to, to ensure that we have a very diverse and rich um, plane of um, or arena or options of clubbing experiences because for the most part they've really benefited me in the long run I've really been it's really affected who I am as a person it's allowed me to grow it's made me to uh, tap into a new scene to make friends to discover interests I never knew I had to do a hobby now, DJing in bars and pubs where I get fucking paid to play in these random bubs and pubs, it, it, no, as a hobby. It's amazing. It's something that's really, really expanded my worldview. I travel to different places. I go different zones. I'm more comfortable in different random areas because of the places I go in clubbing-wise. It's really benefited me so much so, but I don't think I could have had those benefits if I was just standing there with a fucking phone in front of my face, making sure I'm capturing every single event. It wouldn't happen that way. Um, anyway, it continues. Um, each designated person or group uh, becomes a black hole of social engine energy as author david kane notes pulling attention away from what's actually happening so if all which is very very true so if all this is true if we know filming both as djs takes out a live experience and irritates almost everyone around us why do we keep doing it well because we're selfish people are saying it's okay if i use my phone at an event because i want to get the special photo but when someone else does it well that's really annoying which is very true i don't tend to do it at all the last thing i did take a picture out was the drake tour and again i took like a one a two second video that was incredibly horrible if you're on my instagram you'll check it out or if i've seen it my stories i did it before it's just really shitty video and i felt really shitty about doing it but i don't necessarily take videos anywhere dr harlinger statement likely won't surprise anyone who noticed um had heading to sorry statement would know anyone noticed the narcissistic nature of many live events festivals clubs and concerts are places where having the perfect night can sometimes come at a cost for everyone else but having that perfect night suddenly becomes much more difficult if the stage is hidden behind a sea of phones or if a nearby group won't stop taking selfies or using their phone flashes yeah i don't really mind people taking videos but it's just the fact that they don't stop 
it's just like a they don't there's no end it's oh another one another one because there's always something going on right the vj puts on good lighting the dj maybe cuts out the bass brings it back in again uses an effect people's hands are going there's always something happening so it's like oh, they're always kind of chasing that moment it's like no just capture what you want to capture and put your phone away but people don't do that this is why outright bands probably work out the best despite how annoying camera phones at live events have become usage um, isn't likely to stop on its own on its own anytime soon after all one third of the survey also said filming and video and video photographing was an important part of a live experience and nearly half said that they took photos and videos at events they attended again i don't know why you do that it's just about it's, it's not just the young people either if photos a 44 year old crowd are probably the worst actually i just like it to do it as 18 to 24 that means it's going to have to come down to venues and to a less extent artists do something despite common understanding that cracking down would alienate fans the survey shows that majority of people 69% feel strongly about uh, supporting measures that might limit mobile phone use at live events, which is true. You'd think it would happen, right? But it might look at a place like Bergheim, right? They're incredibly harsh on the door. There's an incredibly high um, threshold in your tour to enter, right? You have to meet a certain criteria to enter in the first place. They don't like you to take pictures and they continually turn people away, right? So they do all the things that would necessarily, wouldn't necessarily cultivate a good experience. They do away with those conventions and they enforce these rules and people still line up every single weekend to go and party that place without fail. So they've basically ensured, they basically showcased to us why it works because what happens is that once you finally get into that place after loads of failed attempts, what you realize is that, oh, this is why they, they this is why there's such there's such dicks downstairs because of this. You're like, ah, now it, it makes complete sense. Now it makes all the sense in the world. So I think um those efforts are made by the venues, what kind of translates into the actual club itself. And there's plenty of times when you've been in the club and I've actually seen people that are in the club having a good time tell somebody off for using their phone. Sometimes someone might take the stick off and take a picture and someone will tell them off, like, no, don't do that. We don't do that here. And that's the community police themselves because the rules have been enforced so well in the front of the house that it's really, um, it plays into the level of comfortability they have in the venue that anytime they see someone breaking the rules or going, you know, veering off course, like, hey, hey don't do that because you're going to fuck up this for everybody. Right? That one selfish action you're doing for yourself is going to impact us all. Don't do that. Which is why on YouTube, you probably can find maybe four or five videos at the at most of what's in, it's inside. Of, what what's what's it like being inside Burger? And even then, it's not really a very fair reflection of what's inside or what's it like to be in there. It also shows that there is a support to measures like creating no phone zones. And I don't agree that no phone zones. Just don't put them in there at all. Spot checks or over filming or over or more or more popularity. Gentle nudges by venue staff to make phones more discreet. Artists can also get more vocal or social media reminding fans to film early before enjoying the rest of the night, which I definitely agree with. That's what Charlie Scambino did and he set during Coachella and it worked a treat. If you watch his set, there's not that many phones out there for the most part. I'm not sure what happened in the second week, but I remember the first week he told everyone not to film and just to enjoy the night. That was really good. As for industry professionals, approximately four out of five surveyed had concerns about people recording or pictures during performances. However, a disappointing 63% had no measure issue with it. Whether it's more no photo policies at clubs like Beyond Berlin, signs posted outside down or asking patrons to keep their phones pocketed security offering gentle reminders um to stop patrons from over filming or alternatives like yonder the support is there what happens next is up to us the yonder thing i don't think will work i think in general people would tend to go out i think if you don't know yonder yonder is a service that dave Chappelle made popular it's these little pouches that comedians sometimes use where in a venue they'll have these little pouches that attendees can put their phones in it has a lock that only they can open and then they leave their phone they, they leave the phone in person if they want to use it, they have to unlock the pouch by going outside and scanning it on like a little it's like a little you know those shop things they use in the shop to kind of take off the tag you scan it on there and it opens your phone so you can only use your phone when you go out of the venue so what it does it limits you getting up and down because you know you have to kind of use you know it's like a it's like the toilet in the cinema right it's so far away so you have to limit the times the amount of times you get up you have to make sure you get your piss in before the movie starts so you don't get up, get up and start disturbing everyone's night same with the comedy clubs i don't think i'll work in a nightclub it'll be hordes of people outside and it'll be it'll be bad for the dj too because there'll be waves of people going in and out of the night and it wouldn't be a fair question of, of 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 what how much fun people have it would just be it would just be an effect of their anxiety of their phones so i think in general a far out ban is the best thing to do and you know again enjoy the night man no need to have phones on the dance floor at all